Nova Surf Club is based at the university, so at the Nova School of Business and Economics in Krakowelos, yeah. but yeah. we accept people from all the Nova universities and also uh, faculties and also people that are not um, in Nova um, in, signed up, so they can be also students from other universities or people who are already working. Um, we're currently, um, we're mostly people who are at Nova. Um, and then we have one person from outside Nova who studies in Porto who uh, joined us this semester. Um, but we are always, always looking for motivated people. Uh, but our main scope is Nova SBE. However, the or events we organize are open um, to all Nova community and also people from outside the Nova community. Wonderful. So, Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Um, so maybe I would uh, pass on the word to you. Um, okay. And, and, um, yeah, so just briefly, this uh, this webinar, so um, Jose will talk a little bit about bottle and at the end of the presentation, um, participants will be um, will be able to ask any questions. I also have some questions prepared. Um, and and yes, so uh, we'd love to hear from you. Jose. Okay, Thank you. We, we take it from here. So uh, this, uh, this is a, a startup that we have, uh, in fact, uh, developed last year, but uh, officially um, was founded uh, on the 7th of January this year. So it's uh, from the 2021. Uh, and uh, it came from the a concept we uh, saw implemented in uh, Australia, um, whereby uh, Australia, as you probably know, uh, it's one of the countries with a higher number of uh, reefs. But the natural reefs, as you will see from the, the storyline that I will present to you, uh, are progressively being destroyed for various reasons, for the fishing, for the, for the, um, the climate change, so the, uh, the increase of temperature. And uh, uh, so in Australia, they have started to develop this concept of artificial reefs, engineered reefs, to progressively replace existing reefs. And in fact, if you look now to uh, this quick synopsis, um, the oceans are absolutely uh, vital for, to mitigate the climate change, are absolutely vital for the future of the planet. 50% of global CO2 produced is absorbed and the other 50% uh, goes to atmosphere and oceans. Uh, in fact, the, the, um, the reefs, and the ecosystems related to, to the coral reefs, they support one quarter, 25% of all marine life in the world, although the, the reefs are less than 0.1% of the, the space of the oceans. Uh, but because of these uh, new fishing methodologies with, uh, uh, what, uh, with explosions and uh, very uh, complex uh, fishing uh, uh, processes, this is destroying progressively the, the reefs, which also cannot afford to, uh, to absorb an increase of the temperature of one degree or one and a half degrees in the oceans. We see that the way it is uh, evol evolving in the next uh, 30 years up to 2050, 90% uh, or over, uh, uh, over 90 percent of all reefs will be uh, destroyed by that. So, that was the, the basis to uh, start uh, thinking about developing our engineer reefs. You all know the climate change uh, is, is, uh, uh, is devastating, um, not only the planet, but particularly the, the oceans. Um, just a couple of years ago, we had our UN uh, uh, General Secretary, Antonio Guterres, uh, in this uh, a cover of the Time magazine that is uh, illustrates that the world uh, is changing, and uh, of course, this is a very important uh, dimension: is to uh, restore, to conserve, to preserve our oceans. If we can go uh, another slide, please. Um, so, what 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 I would like to to tell you is that. Uh, of, also, uh, internationally, the United Nations uh, is uh, taking the oceans at the top of the agenda. Uh, so the ecosystem restoration is uh, absolutely key in the view of the United Nations. 
And in fact, uh, we all know that we live in a blue planet uh, and the oceans and seas cover 71% of the Earth's surface. And of course, uh, uh, this is very good that the United Nations have finally uh, come up with uh, putting the oceans at the center of the, the decision, at the top of the agenda. And when uh, the, the UN uh, 2030 Sustainable Development uh, Goals were created in 2015, it was the first time ever that the oceans uh, took a, a very leading position and through uh, what I was just uh, talking to, to your colleague, um, through the, the goal number 14, which is life below water. And that's uh, now uh, with this uh, uh, leadership of the United Nations, all the regions in Americas, Europe, Africa, Asia, Oceania are undertaking a lot of important steps to uh, to take on board this uh, challenge of the life below water. So if you can go to the, the following, to the next, yes. So uh, when we designed our startup, uh, the vision was to uh, look for resilient ocean systems that can absorb carbon, generate oxygen, and rebound or give life back to the oceans. And uh, how would we accomplish our mission would be through the creation of engineered reefs. We don't like to call them artificial reefs because today it's, everything is artificial, in, uh, artificial intelligence, everything is artificial. So it's engineered reefs, but also develop systems that uh, allow us to harness big ocean data. So, and that is very important. Uh, um, that can lead us to ocean resilience and also revitalize uh, local economies. So in, in our mission, we also uh, we were also very uh, concerned with the, everything that we do has to do uh, a positive impact, not only on the oceans, not only on the, on the, the mitigation of climate change, but also how, uh, whilst we revitalize local economies, we are also impacting positively uh, the local economies. And our values, um, design nature-based uh, technology, respect the ecosystems, uh, and believe in a uh, positive future. Because if you, if you now uh, read everything that the United Nations uh, wrote about the, the future of the planet, uh, all the, the leaders in Europe with the European Green Deal, um, the, the future um, sometimes looks a bit, uh, a bit dark. But in fact, we have to understand that we can and we, we are in a position to revert the, the, the climate change and uh, uh, work towards uh, a positive future. But it's not only by... Uh, watching every single day the National Geographic and, and so on. It's by taking action now. So this is a very important value for us. Can, can we proceed? Yeah. I will not take a long time here, but just to tell us about our CEO. He has uh, uh, two scuba diving uh, uh, schools in uh, Singapore and Malaysia. And it was with Jerome that I've started to learn more about the developments of the artificial reefs in, uh, in Australia. And uh, we wanted to develop in Malaysia and now we brought it to, to Portugal and uh, build up the company here. Uh, Jerome also wrote uh, um, a book in uh, Together We Can uh, Turn Tides. And, uh, and this is... Uh, uh, very, uh, very important for the education, the literacy of, of the oceans, which is important because most of the people like the sea and you probably at the Nova Surf Club, you know a lot about the, the oceans, but most people don't. And so we also need that literacy of, uh, uh, of over the oceans so that people uh, can really act and understand how uh, vital and urgent it is to act. So yes, the second one would be uh, my colleague uh, from, is working for Shell, but now is committing to, totally to Blue Oasis, has uh, had more than 30 years with Shell, is a mechanical engineer. And uh, uh, to, a, to a certain extent, all of us came a bit from the oil and gas industry. So we have uh, learned to deal with the bottom of the sea 
and with the offshore platforms and so on. And so we learned uh, 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 the impacts in the in the oceans through uh, the, the oil and gas industry. Uh, Michiel is so a um, uh, mechanical engineer with that background. Yes. Myself, well, uh, also worked uh, many, uh, many years with Shell in uh, various countries, uh, US, Brazil, Portugal, and uh, UK. Uh, and more recently, I've been uh, very dedicated to uh, startups in the sustainable area, in the um, uh, energetic efficiency. So it was more on the green economy, and now uh, I'm dedicating to the blue economy. Please, yes. And why, uh, why did we convince uh, uh, my colleagues, uh, my Dutch colleagues, that one is in Holland and another one is in Singapore to uh, base the company in Portugal? It's because Portugal has the largest uh, territorial area uh, of, uh, of seas in Europe and is the ninth largest in, in the world. We have uh, over three and a half million square kilometers. So if we think about our country and we say that we have 92,000 square kilometers, that is 3% of the total. The other 97% are sea. Uh, are, uh, so we, we do have, uh, uh, our history is based uh, on the seafaring, on the discovery, uh, through uh, the Atlantic Ocean, through the Indic Ocean, through uh, the Pacific Ocean, we have been around for the last six centuries in the seas. So, uh, and uh, very fortunate also, we will have a, um, a United Nations Ocean Conference, United Nations Ocean Summit Conference, um, that was supposed to take place in 2020, then moved to 2021 due to the pandemic is now in 2022, but that will be the most important uh, ocean summit of the United Nations uh, in, the, in the next few years. And that is based also in Portugal. So I think Portugal is right now at the center of the discussion of the oceans. And that is why I also believe uh, it's so important for Blue Oasis technology uh, to be based here in Portugal. Yes. So the, what we are building, an enterprise established in Portugal with aim to deploy thousands of engineer coral reefs around the globe. We'll start, uh, we have already some experience in, uh, as I told you, in Malaysia and Singapore. Uh, and we are uh, looking to the opportunities in, the, in, uh, in, uh, in Portugal, in Spain. Uh, we have just participated in a, uh, in a tender for a, um, a deployment of uh, artificial reefs in, uh, in the south of Catalonia, nearby Tarragona, uh, also in, um, in Tunis, uh, in Tunisia, and in Malta. And uh, uh, right now we are working on opportunities in Madeira and in, in the Algarve. So we are working uh, towards the, this area of uh, Portugal in Europe. Yes, please. Yes, we can. We can move one, yeah. So uh, we, we serve several industries, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. We serve several industries, uh, the, the marine engineering and design, of course, uh, civil engineering, uh, the food technology. Um, it's interesting that uh, um, the tourism is absolutely crucial. Uh, in fact, uh, when I mentioned to you the artificial reefs in Australia, they are uh, strongly dedicated to uh, develop the tourism in the Golden Coast of Australia, in the north uh, northeast of Australia. Um, scuba diving is uh, one of the sources of income to the local population, to the local government. So by having uh, better reefs and uh, um, possibilities of better scuba diving. This uh, attracts high-end tourism uh, connected to scuba diving. Bio and medical technology, academic research and development. We, we, uh, we always uh, uh, joke here in uh, Blue Oasis that we start to knowing a lot about Mars, but we don't know enough about our oceans. So we need uh, all information uh, available also for academic research. 
material science uh, and of course because we want to have materials our reefs have to be as you will see in a moment they are made out of eco geopolymers so we want to reduce uh, carbon footprint to the minimum uh, but also um, we also bear in mind the interest of coastal defense and development uh, you probably know that with with the oceans uh, rising uh, coastal defense will become an even more important issue in the in the coming decades. Yes, so we can go to the next one. So the uh, what we have developed is a model technology. Um, so uh, the the models they can interlock uh, in between each other. So we can we can build pyramids. We can build uh, squares. Uh, and materials used are low carbon impact, as I was telling you, eco geopolymer concretes, and are manufactured with trained local labor close to deployment sites. What we develop, we develop the molds. But for instance, if we are to uh, deploy or uh, develop a business in, uh, in Madeira, we will build in Madeira, we'll send the molds, and we'll uh, use. Uh, local companies to produce it. So we do want to have uh, a serious local impact and therefore uh, this is one of the ways to, to, do, to do it. Yes. So the interesting thing is as we uh, develop the, the what we call the aqua landscape architecture, uh, these engineer reefs, uh, they reproduce uh, life in the ocean, so the fauna, the flora, uh, at a very fast speed because uh, the nutrients that uh, are in the in the seas they progressively uh, get uh, to the to the to the reefs uh, and uh, in uh, we are seeing in Australia in twelve months, eighteen months time you start having life there. So the, the, the flora starts to grow, the fishes are coming, and uh, we also differentiate the, the reefs according to the type of fish we would like to, to develop. So this fish, fish stock, stock repopulation is a very important di uh, dynamic of these engineered reefs. But of course, the, the interesting thing is that we uh, life gets on uh, in, in a very short period of time, in 12, 18 months, you start uh, growing. Yeah. So um, we have, we have uh, several features. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I don't want to, to be too detailed on this. This is really uh, how we develop uh, progressively the, the solutions depending whether we are looking more for tourism, for the scuba diving, or we are looking more for uh, fish stock repopulation. And if we are looking more for fish stock repopulation, what kind of fish we would like to develop, um, whether we are looking more for infrastructure protection or coastal, coastal protection. So uh, with that, we have different solutions that we develop according to the to the the, the final uh, the final end or the final needs. Okay. So uh, the models of uh, design, as I was telling you, depending on uh, the the purpose, they are designed by fluid dynamic uh, engineers. So we brought also people from the the oil and gas uh, industry that worked uh, also in uh, in several companies connected to oil and gas. And uh, the models come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, we have uh, combinations of five times five times five, so that's 125 cubic meters, up to one to one to one, which is just one cubic meter. For instance, if we are looking at uh, volcanic islands such as Madeira, we would have to uh, go for bigger units uh, uh, because the, the the conditions of the the sea, the tides, uh, um, the the waves are very strong, and so uh, you need to have a solid base to to uh, develop these artificial reefs. 
If we were uh, on the opposite, if we go to the Algarve, there are areas in the region of Tavira and so on, which small units would make a hell of a difference to generate life. And uh, there is no, uh, uh, the currents and tides uh, and waves are not so strong. And so we could handle with a, a smaller, uh, smaller units. Okay. So as I was telling you, because we can stack up the the um, our uh, reefs, uh, we can do squares, we can do pyramids, we can do uh, different colonies. And uh, when, when you when we talk about one artificial reef, we are talking about uh, uh, 1,500 to 2,000 uh, small units that can have. Uh, uh, an impact in say uh, one and a half to two kilometers extension per uh, 150 to 100 meters. So th that is uh, sufficient to create um, life and uh, uh, change to a certain extent, uh, adjust the, 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 the impact of tides and currents. Yes, please. So uh, where are, our potential income streams, as I was telling you, the tourism is a Q1 um, for the diving uh, diving sites. The coastal protection, we all know that, uh, as I was telling you, the, the rising of the seas, but we don't, uh, even before the rising of the seas, you probably have heard that uh, in our coastline from uh, Spinho till Figueira da Forge, the coast is to a certain extent losing uh, or uh, going backwards uh, a few meters um, every decade. And uh, um, there are different ways of, uh, for people who know Aveiro, you have those uh, uh, structures of uh, in stone that are called the pontões, but we uh, believe our uh, systems of reefs would have a more effective solution to, uh, to uh, protect or reduce uh, this coastal erosion. Then life and food, are we uh, going for this fish stock repopulation? A very important other uh, use uh, of our systems is for infrastructure uh, protection, infrastructure enhancement. Just to give you uh, an example. Um, if you think about EDP and their developments of um, um, the offshore windmills for the for wind, for eolic uh, energy, uh, they have uh, uh, those cables to bring the energy produced offshore to mainland. So the protection of those cables, it's uh, uh, another application for these uh, uh, artificial reefs, for these engineer reefs. And finally, the data collection, uh, which is very important for many areas, for marine traffic, for for uh, meteorology, for tourism, etc. Okay. So, and uh, a part of the, the the financials, which are the how can we make uh, money? As I I did not mention yet, but uh, of course we we want to uh, to do good whilst making money, and that is very much. Uh, uh, the logic that we uh, also decided to to apply for B Corp exactly because we want to produce an impact uh, in in a, a impact investment, uh, making a profit but do good and do good is also uh, by uh, creating those uh, structures we are uh, contributing to carbon absorption. We are contributing to oxygen generation. We are contributing to life creation in the in the in the in the oceans, and of course, we are contributing to sustainable economies of the local economies where we apply uh, those reefs. Yes. Okay. Then we have here uh, a quick case study. Uh, you can pass one more, please. So this is uh, the example of, uh, I was telling you about uh, uh, the Gold Coast uh, in the northeast of Australia, where we have monitored the, the development. This, this is, uh, these values are in Australian dollars. 
um, and uh, we have discussed this with the local authorities, the government and the municipalities, how they, they measure so that we can also uh, have uh, adapt that to a business model that uh, stack up and um, uh, makes a profit. Okay, so uh, the, the impact of these uh, reefs, uh, it's uh, huge in terms of uh, visitors, in terms of the economic impact to, to the local economy. Yes, please. Um, and of course, um, the, the impact has to do with create positive contributions to the environment, reestablish damaged marine ecosystems and provide the ocean biodiversity, create opportunities for community engagement, protect existing life below water and enable research because uh, part of the data that we will generate, we will give, uh, not sell, we will give to universities and research institutes so that we have a better understanding of our oceans. <clears throat> Please. So um, we are, um, of course, the 17 uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals are entirely uh, uh, looked upon by us, but I would say that, uh, uh, of course, life below water is the most important uh, of the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals for us. But uh, we are talking about the, the oceans and the seas literacy, so creating conditions for a better education also uh, concerning the oceans, uh, decent work and economic growth, the industry by developing special materials uh, with a low carbon footprint, um, the partnerships that we build uh, to produce locally the, uh, the reefs, the impact in the climate uh, action, so through the mitigation of climate change, and of course, life below water is the most important for our uh, for blue oasis. Okay, so um, uh, the, those are my colleagues. Uh, I will not uh, uh, go very much, and then we have created. Uh, let me just show you uh, if you can go. Um, uh, just uh, can go. Yeah, yeah. Advisor to the, the advisor panel. Yes. What we decided also to do, and that is very important, and the connection to the university, uh, we decided to invite several people to, um, although we are a startup, we would like to have uh, an advisory panel that can, um, um, that can monitor uh, how trustful are we to our uh, vision and to our mission. And uh, we have uh, brought in people that uh, have a, a very important knowledge in this area, like this Professor Judith Walls from St. Gallen, from the University of St. Gallen, Switzerland. She is the head of the business and sustainability uh, of uh, St. Gallen. Um, we brought this Dr. Gillian Hoy. Uh, she is uh, an expert uh, in uh, seagrass. So it's the, the flora development that we would like to achieve with, uh, with uh, our uh, reef colonies. We brought other people like Mark and Simon, and uh, maybe you can pass one more, please. Um, and here we have, for instance, uh, Stacy Tai. She is uh, an American. Uh, uh, f she's a guru in marine science, I would say. Um, and uh, we have. Uh, she is giving a very, very important contribution to us, uh, as well as Peter Todd is an expert in uh, marine biology and uh, tropical marine ecosystems. So we are discussing the possibilities in places like uh, Cap Verde, and we would like to have also input from people that have uh, been studying all their lives uh, these developments. Okay. So um, then uh, there are many financial instruments available today. As I was telling you, the United Nations is involved and wants to finance it through their uh, this, this United Nations Environment Program Finance Initiative. But uh, in Europe, uh, given the European Green Deal uh, and uh, the future um, uh, development of the Portugal 2027 uh, or so-called 2030, as well as the PRR, 
the new program for recovery and resilience. Um, they have they have uh, clearly uh, sustainability as one of the key points, and you can see, for instance, in the in the EU in the EU horizon, you have the one of the five missions is healthy oceans, seas, coastal, and inland waters. So uh, that positions uh, the oceans at a very high level, uh, not only uh, at the United Nations. Uh, level but also in the European Commission and uh, throughout Europe and of course in Portugal uh, some of the funds are being developed uh, in this area to support uh, initiatives in this area the the blue funds uh, and even um, I would tell you that um, uh, the government wants uh, to uh, to have a, a leading position in Europe uh, for the reasons that we already know, the, the dimension of the seas in, uh, that are under the administration of Portugal. But really, uh, it's uh, uh, an area where we can um, develop uh, by, uh, by developing, I always say that by developing the blue economy, we are also decarbonizing the economy, which is important because we need to to find other sources of uh, income for the for the Portuguese, for the for the Europeans, uh, for the populations, uh, but how can we possibly do that whilst decarbonizing the whole economy? And the blue economy is certainly one of the ways to decarbonize the whole economy. So, and uh, one more, please. Okay. Uh, and of course, we are very proud to be part of, uh, as a startup, a pending B Corp member. Uh, as you saw, uh, we are strongly concerned with the, with the environment. We are strongly concerned with the biodiversity. We are strongly concerned with the oceans and the impact the oceans have in the mitigation of climate change. And we are very, uh, we are strongly concerned with the, with the positive impact to the local economies where we develop uh, where we develop our activities. So uh, I think this is very much aligned with uh, also the purpose of B Corp. And so we are proud to, to be a uh, pending member of B Corp. So I'm totally open for your questions. Uh, and um, uh, I don't know if you would like to make comments, please, uh, please do. Thank you, Jose. Thank you very much for this presentation. I think it gave us a great, great insight on what you do. Um, I have a question here uh, from Britta. She wanted to know what the material, uh, what the material is that you use to build the um, eco reefs. Yeah, uh, as uh, I mentioned, we we are looking for a very low uh, carbon footprint. So. Uh, we have developed uh, materials, uh, in fact, which are eco-geopolymers. Uh, and of course, uh, they are uh, mixed with concrete, uh, but uh, concrete due to, to a very high carbon footprint, we are, uh, it's only a small percentage of the total uh, ingredients. So uh, the, 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 the main ingredient is uh, eco-geopolymers. Okay, thank you. Um, for the other participants, feel free to unmute if you have any questions or to write in the chat. I will, um, I, I mean, Jose will, will um, answer. Um, Jose, in the meantime, um, I'd like to ask you, um, do you have current mechanisms to measure your impact? So the, the way you, um, which, which environmental and social impact you have right now? Yeah, uh, to, uh, yes, this is a very important uh, question because um, what what, um, what we sense is that um, with the progressive destruction of uh, the reefs worldwide, and this is not uh, uh, an issue only in Portugal, I mean, we had reefs in front of Sagres and because of this uh, uh, fishing, uh, I don't know the name in English, uh, Pesca de Arrasto, we have destroyed entirely the our uh, reefs in front of Sagres and uh, in many areas but of course we know that the, the highest concentration of reefs is in the southeast asia and north australia but the reality is that the reefs they represent 25% of uh, of uh, um, 
the generation of fishes. So uh, by creating uh, by creating conditions to uh, give life back to the oceans and uh, uh, repopulate fishes, uh, we are uh, seriously contributing to um, to the environment in one side because we are also absorbing uh, carbon. But we are uh, contributing to another important dimension is that 60% of the protein today uh, um, as food uh, of the humankind is coming from, from the seas, 60%. So uh, this destruction of the, the reefs is also destru the, destroying the food. So we, we, uh, that, that is a... a uh, a serious concern. We in Portugal, we like very much uh, fish. Not all the countries are like that, but there are countries where fish is 90%, 100% of their protein. So uh, if we destroy uh, the birth of uh, uh, the cradle of the fishes in, uh, in the oceans, uh, of course, this is a, a serious uh, uh, problem in terms of food. This one side. But the other side is uh, the, the seagrass that uh, develops alongside of the, the artificial reefs is uh, um, it absorbs significantly carbon. Uh, and the studies that we are doing, and this is something, of course, we would like to, to um, work more with the research institutes, is to uh, identify the, the metrics in terms of carbon absorption per uh, square meter of uh, seagrass or, uh, or seaweed. Because the, the reefs create conditions, these artificial reefs create conditions not only for the, the, the fauna, for the fishes, but also for the flora. So by developing seagrass and seaweed, we are creating uh, very, very important conditions to absorb uh, carbon and generate oxygen. So. Uh, we have already some metrics, uh, the metrics that are already in use in Australia, but this is an area where we would like to develop with the universities. In, in fact, we are uh, discussing with the university in Holland, but also with the University of Algarve that you probably know, they are strongly concerned with the oceans. Um, and this is something that uh, will enable uh, to go further because uh, then the, the, the companies that are concerned with sustainability, they will be even more uh, uh, happy to invest in uh, developments that can have the metric of uh, carbon absorption or uh, carbon sequestering or oxygen generation. So uh, yes, uh, to answer your question, sorry, it was a bit long. We have two concerns. One is the food and the other is uh, the, the carbon and oxygen. So we, we believe this is a, a significant contribution to, uh, to the environment, but also to the food of mankind. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, we have another question here um, from Celine Kella. She wants to know if you have any projects in Portugal at the moment and if you're planning to build uh, engineered reefs in the near future. Yes, we, we, we are uh, right now um, in, um, in two processes. One is uh, with Madeira and another one is in the Algarve. Uh, it was very, it's very interesting because um, the, um, Although we want to make this scalable, uh, the, um, the, uh, the adaptation to, local, to the local conditions is uh, absolutely essential. Because, for instance, uh, this comparison of Madeira being a volcanic island, uh, very open to the sea with a strong current, strong tides, strong waves, uh, it's very different from what we see in the Algarve. Uh, especially in the Algarve, closer to Spain. Um, so we, we are looking for a, a, a pos possible large reef in Madeira uh, that will entail two objectives. One objective is uh, to create, uh, uh, to further expand the scuba diving uh, as a tourism attraction in Madeira. The, the other dimension is exactly fish stock repopulation and they want specific fishes. 
whereas in um, in Algarve, it's a small uh, um, area close by to the Ria Formosa in uh, front of Faro and Olhão, uh, where uh, we would like to um, reproduce so small conditions for uh, something that is highly appreciated, but unfortunately is almost disappeared, which are the seahorses. So uh, creating conditions in smaller reefs not only to develop the, the, the flora part of the seagrass, but creating conditions to uh, develop in terms of fauna, some of the small fishes and particularly the seahorses that uh, uh, were uh, abundant in that area in the Rio Formosa in front of Faro Leão, uh, some 30, 40 years ago. And right now with, um, with um, exhaustive fishing almost disappeared. So. This is uh, there in the Algarve is not for scuba diving, it's really to protect uh, some of the species that are disappearing. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Really interesting to see how um, in the same country, so to say, we have two such different ecosystems. It's very different. Very yeah. different. Very, and, and of course, if you th would think in front of uh, Carcavelos <laughs> uh, or in front of Cascais, um, the the objectives would be different. Uh, in fact, uh, what one dimension and that is from a financial perspective important. There are some six to seven million uh, scuba divers or uh, amateurs that uh, like to do scuba diving at a higher level. Six to seven million scuba divers that out of the pandemic, so up to 2019, flew every year to Asia for scuba diving because they don't have in Europe enough attractive uh, areas for scuba diving. So one of the things that we believe about Madeira is that Madeira can become an attractive, a very attractive uh, scuba diving destination. And that has a, a strong impact in terms of the tourism, not only in Madeira, but uh, po possibly in the future also in Porto Santo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have uh, two more questions. I'd yes, like yes. to ask you, Jose, to be a little bit brief because since we already yeah. over time. So um, Teresa Manebach is asking um, how you select the places where you where you um, build the engineered reefs and how do you select the, the projects you work on? Yeah. Um, to, to be very honest, uh, Teresa, we, we are looking to... Um, um, to Europe, um, but uh, the the reefs are not so uh, common in Europe. So um, we are uh, trying to motivate. We have uh, chosen some areas that have a, a strong tourism impact uh, in Portugal, in Spain, um, in Italy, in Malta. And we are trying to uh, operate also to convince the local governments of the, the interest, both for uh, the tourism attraction, but also for uh, the importance in terms of sustainability and the contributions to, uh, to uh, the mitigation of climate change. So, um, yes, we are at the moment uh, considering that Portugal and Spain can be uh, interesting destinations. And both countries are very, very interested in tourism. And so we, we believe the, this is, uh, in Europe, the first place to develop. Thank you. Um, so the uh, last question is from Gudrun Drexler. Uh, she asks you, what are the uh, main challenges that uh, Bottle faces as a startup and also as a pending B corporation? Yeah, um, good question. Thank you. Um, well, as all startups, we are uh, right now in uh, in a round of uh, in, in an investors round. So we are presenting our company to several potential investors, uh, to equity funds. So the the first uh, struggle of uh, any startup uh, is always to. Uh, create the conditions to uh, attract investors. So uh, we have developed uh, the, whole, uh, the whole portfolio of products. Uh, we are working on the blue box, as you saw, the, which is the data recorder. 
and that's uh, uh, relevant uh, for to obtain the data. Um, and with that said, we are in Europe and US looking for investors. So this is the first uh, uh, the the first challenge. The I would also say, of course, uh, we call them. Uh, let me uh, share with you. We call uh, them the meteors. We have two meteors. One is to get money from uh, investors, and the other is to get the sales. Get the so those are the two uh, fronts that we are uh, looking for, and those are the two greatest challenge of uh, a startup like, such as ours. On the B Corp, it's very important for us uh, because B Corp. Uh, 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 connects and uh, has a network of uh, companies that ser- that are very serious about sustainability, that are very serious about impact investment, that are very serious about uh, uh, making profit but doing good, and we are totally aligned with that with that perspective. So we are talking to companies uh, in B Corp that really uh, make all sense for us, and uh, hopefully we can make sense for them. I think that is a great uh, line to end this webinar with. We also agree that um, from now on, companies have to be both responsible and also, of course, make a profit. So thank you. Thank you very much for coming. It was lovely having you here. Thank you all. Um, Thank you all and and, uh, success to your studies. And uh, if you want to talk to Blue Oasis, you have my uh, email there. Uh, Please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I wish everyone um, a nice evening and see you next time. Thank you.